Welcome folks, I am Jabby Kuei, joined by Achara Kirk. Hi guys. And we are talking about Aladdin, the film by Guy Ritchie, the live action adaptation of the beloved and classic cartoon from Disney. It stars Will Smith, Mina Masood, and Naomi Scott. Guy Ritchie was apparently a writer on this with John August. I don't know who John August is. I wanted to wait a few days before sharing my feelings about this because I think I was a little hard on the film when I first walked out. I'll tell you why. I came at this like a comic book fan does for any comic book film adaptation or a, a, a book fan like Lord of the Rings. I'm sure there's so many people I spoke to when Lord of the Rings first came out where they're like, oh, it's not as good as the book. I'm like, well, of course not, you snooty bastard. It's like, <laughs> it's not gonna be as good as the original that you read the way you had it in your mind. So right. when, I, when I came to this film, I wanted it to do certain things and it didn't do those things. I've spoken to a wide swath of critics since then. Everyone seems to enjoy it and appreciate it, including you, yeah, I might add. I did. I didn't think it was as good as the original, but I didn't expect it to be, so that was fine by me. I'm gonna be real with you guys. Like, in the first 10 minutes, I was pretty upset, so much so that I wanted to leave, but I stayed. And there were definitely redeeming things about the film, namely Will Smith as the genie. Obviously, nothing can compete for me and my childhood uh, with Robin Williams as Genie. Nothing can compete with that. That's who is in our minds as the Genie from Aladdin. Nothing will ever replace that. But I do like the take that Will Smith gave to it. For me, he was a strong silver lining in the film. I thought that uh, the, the actress playing Jasmine was also really well. I mean, she did a very good job as Jasmine. She was an incredible <clears throat> singer as well, and I yeah. never knew that about Naomi Scott. I was blown away by her singing. So good. I have a long list of negative critiques that I would throw at this, but if you're watching this before going out and watching the film, I don't want to ruin the possibility of you going out and enjoying yourself. But just know that I would recommend you set the bar lower so that you enjoy it more when you go in there. Yes. Because it's not going to come anywhere anywhere within proximity of the cartoon whatsoever. It does seem like people are enjoying it for what it is. But I haven't heard anyone come out of the theater going, that was great. That was an amazing adaptation. Everyone's like, that was good. Yeah, you it know, was, they, do the, they do the Tom Selleck shoulder shrug. It was fun. And like you said, Will Smith was definitely the silver lining. I appreciated him more as the movie went on because I felt like he had more opportunities to bring himself to the role rather right. than trying to do what Robin Williams did. And I think that's kind of the problem that I had with maybe the first 15 minutes of the movie, which is definitely clunky. I do recommend that you just kind of go, okay, we're in for the ride now. Right. And once you get past that kind of bumpy patch, right. then you'll have fun. I want to say also that uh, Real D3D invited us to their screening of Aladdin. That's how we watched it. That made it more enjoyable than it otherwise might have been for me. Before, you know, a couple of years ago, I didn't like 3D films mm -hmm. at all. I was adamantly, staunchly against them. And then Real D was like, why don't you come, you know, check us out over here and, and see what you think. And I actually really enjoy everything they put out now. The, the quality of work they do for the 3D uh, is, is always strong in my opinion. Yeah. So if you're considering whether to watch it in 3D or not, I would say watch it in 3D as long as you're watching it at a, a you know a good 3D theater. I wanted to talk a little bit about the casting. Like we said, Will Smith was super fun. Um, Naomi Scott was a big surprise. Like her acting was great. Her singing was awesome. I actually really liked Mina Masood as well. I know that Initially, you weren't so sure, but I thought that he was charming in the role. I think he made a great Aladdin. He was very cute. Plus, the boy can dance really well and he can sing. And I also appreciated that the movie had a lot of representation going on, which is great. We, we've come a long way, people, and it makes sense to see a lot of Middle Eastern names in the credits. So I appreciate that. Yeah, uh, I, I said who I liked in the movie. <laughs> I already said the talent that I liked. I thought Naomi Scott was great and I thought Will Smith was great. And outside of that, I, I wasn't super happy. I feel like a lot of the film was rushed. If you are someone like me who just loved the cartoon, like I, I watched it when I was six or seven years old in the theater twice back to back because it came to the Dollar Theater. And so my dad put up with me and we sat through some crap film just so I could watch Aladdin again. Aww. So I watched it twice in the same day. I just, that's how much I loved it. I've got it on VHS, got it on DVD, got it on Blu-ray, and I've watched it at least 50 times. Yeah. I know that film forward and backwards. I even know the sequels, you know, really, really well. I, I enjoyed just, I enjoyed the Aladdin cartoon on TV when it was a thing on TV. What I wanted out of this was something ridiculous, which is, 
I just wanted it to be an exact frame for frame adaptation of the cartoon as much as possible. Obviously you cannot replicate um, Robin Williams, but everything else I feel like is pretty manageable and you can totally replicate that. And I, that's all I wanted. It was, a, it was frame for frame, uh, you know, cartoon to live action adaptation. And they, they started mixing things and merging things and then changing things up. And that just frustrated me, and it went against everything that I wanted, and it was that was unfair of me to put that on the movie. Yeah. And I realized that with each live, uh, with each with each live action adaptation that Disney's putting out, I have to like go of that because mm -hmm. they're doing this with Dumbo. It was okay because I didn't watch Dumbo that many times. So what they gave me, I'm like that was pretty good. <laughs> you know, yeah. I had the same I had the same response other people seem to have to Aladdin. But with Lion King, I already know where my heart's at. Like that was the first cartoon I ever cried at in theaters. So. I just want a frame for frame adaptation of Lion King as well and I'm trying my best to just divorce myself from that and go let them do their version of it and be okay with that and take it for what it is but even objectively taking that aside I, I'm like okay was Aladdin a good movie though and I don't know that I, I would strongly recommend it I think that there are redeeming enough qualities in it that you'll have a good time. Yeah, I think it's entertaining. I think it's a serviceable movie. I think it's just fine. It's fun. You'll have a laugh. There were lots of great moments where we were giggling and, and laughing along with the rest of the audience. There's an aspect in this film, like, I mean, they're always adding on, right? Like, uh, uh, not Sleeping Beauty, what am I talking about? Beauty and the Beast yeah. added on scenes and songs. Yeah. I don't know if that was from the musical, the, the, the Broadway show I or whatever. I have heard that some of those songs were from the musical, but don't quote me right. on it. So with Aladdin, there are additional songs, there are additional, there's additional story elements here mm -hmm. that were not present in the cartoon. And that may be because it's more relevant to the times that we're living in. It's trying to, uh, you know, just grow, evolve with the times. What they tried to do here was show more strength in Jasmine, right. give, give her more to grow. More feminism. More fe well. Yeah, more yeah. feminism, which, you know, I'm not, I'm not inherently against feminism whatsoever. I just think that it didn't work as well as the movie wanted it to in my in my opinion, in my estimation, I feel right. like I feel like the cartoon did a better job of showing feminism than this live action adaptation did. And my example of that is in the, and I keep saying this over and over again, in the original, um, Jasmine has this moment where uh, she's uh, eavesdropping as Aladdin and Jafar and the Sultan are all talking about who's gonna win her heart. Mm -hmm. And Jasmine has this like ferocity about her where she goes, I am not a prize to be won. And she just bounces with, and with smoke trailing behind her. She's so angry. And that was one of the earliest uh, um, things in cinema that I've seen where I'm like, wow, that's a strong female and I I love her. She's so awesome. I, I had this notion, this feeling even as a kid, like that's a strong woman and I really admire her and I like her. Whereas for me here, it was bordering on virtue signaling ah. because it was really emphasizing and trying to drive home this notion of a, of a strong Jasmine. I'm not gonna say how, I don't want to ruin it because for a lot of you guys, you might enjoy it and might, might find it to be a very redeeming quality about the movie. I was actually kind of moved by it in certain moments. So uh, that might just be due to the fact that I am a female and they are pandering towards that demographic, so. Yeah, for me, I, I didn't like it because I, I didn't care about it or feel like that was something that was missing from the cartoon. I, I'm a dude, so maybe that's why I didn't feel that. But for me, it's like it wasn't missing, so why are you adding this in? And all I really care about is the relationship between Aladdin and Jasmine. That's all I right. really want to be focused in on. And I felt like this extra stuff was taking away from that. That's number one. Number two is I didn't feel the chemistry between Aladdin and Jasmine as much as I did in the cartoon. And that's my biggest gripe, I think, with the live action adaptation is that I felt a more human connection with the cartoon than I did with the live action adaptation. Uh, namely, from that scene, A Whole New World, uh, that, that musical bit. Like, yeah. the, if you compare the cartoon with the live action, you're gonna see a very, very huge difference between the two and, and the feeling that it elicits in you when you're watching it. I didn't really get much of a feeling from the live action version. Well, I wonder as well if that just comes part and parcel with it being live action and the fact that with animation, you are able to do a lot of cool things that maybe don't really make sense physics wise, but are very cool to watch. I, I would agree with that, except for the fact that the camera work could have been more interesting with the live action adaptation. I just feel like it, not enough was done to get me invested in the characters, even just with the camera work. Right. The, the way, I don't know what Guy Ritchie was doing. Like, I, I like Guy Ritchie, at least his older films. I love Snatch and I love Lockstock. 
and I felt connected to those human beings in those films. But uh, ever since those two films, like I, I can't say that I've seen a Guy Ritchie film where I felt really connected to the people in the movie. Right. Even uh, films that I liked, like uh, uh, Sherlock Holmes, like I didn't really feel connected. It was a fun romp, but I didn't right. feel a connection. Whereas, and, and maybe this is all due to the fact that I watched this as a kid, and you know, kids are dumb and they're like sponges, they'll absorb anything, and, and you know, you look back at something like Super Mario Brothers the movie, and that's awesome when you're a kid, but as a grown up, you're like, this is terrible. So, it might just be legacy that I'm holding on to, and I, I'll admit that. Based on the consensus of people around me, I'd say you should go watch it, and you will probably enjoy it. For me, I, I was pretty upset. <laughs> I was, but again, I, I must emphasize that I'm in the minority. I, I just, I, I keep saying that as almost like an insecurity because I don't want to dissuade people because it seems like so many people are enjoying it. Yeah. So do check it out and let us know your feelings if you've seen it already in the comments below. Let us know your feelings on our feelings. And uh, subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the bell icon so you get notified every time we drop another video. Check out our other reactions, reviews, short films, and vlogs. I am Jabby Kawai. This is Achara Kirk. Peace out.